Hi, I'm Helen from Sunbird Surf and welcome. This little guy is not a sunbird. He's a sun conya, but if I leave him outside, he's making such a noise that I would never be able to film this. So that is the only reason why he's sitting on my shoulder. He might take off though. But for the meantime, at least, um, well, maybe we'll have a bit of peace and quiet. So I've been making year soap for quite a few years and it all started by accident. I was waiting for my children in the car at school when somebody on, a, on the radio talked about the recycling of used vegetable oil and one of the ideas that she gave was to make your own soap. I was very intrigued and I went home and I uh, found a wonderful soaping channel on YouTube. And through that channel, I really learned the basics of soap making. So the reason I'm making this video today is to show you that you don't need any special equipment if you would just try uh, to make one batch of soap if you've never made soap before and you don't want to buy any special equipment. If you don't have a stick blender, for instance, or if you don't have a mold to pour your soap into, you can still make your own soap. Um, it might not be the most beautiful soap in the, in the world, but let me show you how you can do this. You will need two things though that you maybe don't have at home yet. The one is an electronic scale. You're going to have to use an electronic scale because you do work with exact measurements when you make soap and the other thing that you will need is caustic soda a lot of people use caustic soda in their homes to clean their drains with but if you don't have any you can get it in your local supermarket well we do uh, at the household cleaning stuff or maybe the hardware uh, department so with that being said, let me show you what you can use for making soap if you don't have any special equipment. Let me show you what I am going to use. Maybe you have all of these things readily available in your house. I bought this very inexpensive kitchen scale that we will be using. Um, if you don't have one, as I said, that is the one piece of Equipment that you are going to need with your caustic soda that I have here so I am also going to use used vegetable oil just in remembrance of my first encounter with soap making I am going to filter it and then I'm also just going to add some coconut oil that I have in the house because it's really hot here by us the coconut oil is 100% liquid at this stage if you have something like cupcake containers these um, these are silicone cupcake containers if you have anything like this you can use it for um, molding your soap I am going to use a little box today and I'm going to line it with baking paper I cut out two pieces of baking paper to go inside my box. I will just be using these little bull clips to clip it. So this side I will just try to use a piece of masking tape. Now I will repeat the process using another piece. You can also use a stapler. 
and staple the sides. I am going to use this old ice cream container to mix my soap in. I'm not making a huge soap batter because I don't have that much oil, but I am going to make a splash because of the equipment that I'm going to use to show you. You can do it as well if you don't have a stick blender. I put my container on the scale and I place a piece of paper towel in. So I'll first be weighing my sunflower oil to make sure how much I have here. So remember this is oil that has been used already. It's not too dirty. I don't deep fry much but I can smell that it's not fresh smelling. Sunflower oil on its own doesn't make a very good hard soap because every oil has different fatty acids and every fatty acid has a different temperament when it comes to soap making. Some is very nourishing, some has a lot of cleaning potential and other fatty acids um, contributes to hardness for example. So, But what I do have in my house that I'm going to add to this is some coconut oil because coconut oil is quite cleansing and it makes beautiful bubbles. If you add too much coconut oil though, it can dry out your skin or it will feel like your skin is drying out. It strips all the fats and oils from your skin. So it feels too drying then. So, But up to 20% coconut oil in your batch is 100%. So I will be using that. It will contribute to the hardness of the soap and it will also um, give me a bar of soap that is very usable at home. Through another soap maker, YouTuber, I found a very uh, user-friendly lye calculator and I'm going to put the recipe, this recipe that I make into that lye calculator and I will leave the link for you so that you can duplicate this soap. So now that all my sunflower oil has um, filtered through the kitchen towel, I'll be adding my 20% coconut oil which results in about 94 grams and it makes a, almost 500 gram uh, a total of soap. When you work with lye, make sure that there are no children close by and rather put the pets in a safe spot as well. You need to wear some safety equipment which is not nothing uh, extraordinary or strange. I just put on some um, kitchen gloves that you use to wash your dishes with and then I just put on a pair of safety goggles. It will splatter so you need to be able to protect yourself from that. So just make sure you get all the animals safely out of the way. I pre-measure my water and my lye. This is all in the recipe. You are supposed to use distilled water in soap making, but because we have a reverse osmosis system in our house, I use that water instead because it is very clean and safe. And I've never had any problems using the reverse osmosis water before. So instead of spending more money on uh, buying distilled water, I just use that. Please remember to always add 
to always add the dry ingredients to the wet. Um, in soap making, you can also use other liquids other than water, but still the same principle counts. Make sure your area is very well ventilated. I stir this until it is completely dissolved. Now the first time I made soap, I used my electric beaters to emulsify my oils and the lye. This will not go down well with any soap maker as an electric beater beats in air into this whole mixture, which we really don't want. But if you just want to make soap, to try it out for the first time, really, there's no reason why you cannot use it so this is the one way that you can try out soap making for yourself if you don't have a stick blender another way is just to use a spoon and stir continuously my lye solution has cooled down enough for me to feel that it's only warm to the touch and this is where you should really wear your protective goggles because it can splatter I also use this very deep container because I'm going to use my electrical beaters. I don't want anything to go over the edge of my bucket. Let me show you how I use my electric beaters to emulsify this mixture. By now my soap has a thin trace which means that it leaves a little thin line on the rest of the batter when I splatter it over it. I am going to add my essential oils to it as I have no other things that I'm going to do with this soap. I'm going to keep it very simple.
using your hand to mix your soap or even an electric beater takes much more time than a stick blender would because a stick blender is much more powerful. My soap is starting to look like tinned condensed milk now and this is a good time for me to pour it out especially because this bucket is a very big bucket for my small amount of soap and I don't want anything to get stuck here. I will pour this over a spoon and it will just help to get rid of some of that bubbles that I have created because of this the technique that I used. I will remove the soap from this box after 24 hours and then I will cut it with a knife so that you can see what it looks like and I will also do a little bit of a leather test so that you can see. It doesn't smell any bit like used vegetable oil at all. It just smells like fresh new soap.